Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Hey friends, Dave Kading. Uh, before we get into the show, I wanted to mention that team has supported this particular podcast and I'm really grateful for them reaching out to us. And they mentioned that they would like to give uh, members of the Myopia podcast community a $250 discount off of their first virtual assistant. If you have not considered uh, bringing in a virtual team, uh, I can attest to how wonderful it is. Over the last two years, we've brought in uh, about 10 team members onto our uh, practice. We've used different staffing services and we've had issues over the years with our staff not getting paid, having issues here or there, issues with the communication. And that has been really taken care of since we've joined up with team and their uh, their group of virtual people. Uh, it's been fantastic and I would highly recommend that you consider doing it for your office. They can do things by answer the phone for you. They can uh, check uh, insurances. They can give patients calls. They can check on uh, scribing for you in the exam room and do a host of different things, particularly in the myopia community. It's great to have somebody that can be in charge of these sort of things, checking on those myopic patients, seeing how they're doing, giving them a care call after they've had orthokeratology for a day, uh, and just kind of be a right hand to you in the exam room or to your billing team or your front desk. Consider higher team.com, H-I-R-E-T-E-E-M.com, or click the show notes to get the $250 discount when you sign up. Now back to the show. Well, thank you for joining us. This is Dave Kading. I'm so excited to be uh, be here. We're at the Vision by Design meeting in 2023, and uh, we are in the exhibit hall. I'm excited to be joined by uh, Dr. Brianna Rue, and we are uh, want to also mention that the Vision by Design meeting of 2024 is October 2nd through 5th. So make sure to uh, set your calendars so that you can uh, learn a little bit about more myopia and orthokeratology at the Vision by Design meeting. How are you today? I am excited to be here both as an attendee, as a speaker, as an exhibitor. So, you know, yeah. wearing many different hats. Most people, I would hope, know who you are by now, particularly with regards to your company. Can you just give us a quick little bit about Dr. Contact Lens? Sure, so Dr. Contact Lens was created out of a need in our own practices to really help us compete against the online vendors. And we're the ones doing all of the hard work and then printing a prescription and handing it to the patient and hoping they end up ordering from us. So we wanted to digitize the solution that enables patients to do business with their doctors. And that's what we've curated at Dr. Contact Lens. Yes. And, you know, seen some good growth and making the ink list and all of that that's come yeah, has been really cool. Yeah, tell us more about what, what was this ink list? Yeah, so the Ink 5000 mm -hmm. uh, is a national magazine that rates companies on their growth. And so you look at your 2019 growth to your 2022 growth. So as a tech company, that has been really cool. And I think reflecting back on it, just seeing, I think we could have made number one, David, like it makes me really mad <laughs> if I look at back on the like thousands of no's that our colleagues have given, but yep. you know, the hundreds of yeses that we've gotten on just the patients are driving innovation and mm -hmm. they want this, they want to do business with you, but we're the ones that are holding on to everything yeah. and not changing. And when we do that together, then growth is exponential, whether yeah. it's in contact lenses, myopia, scleral lenses, practice management. We have so much at our fingertips. Yeah, I wanna to touch more on that in a second, but beyond just this small little tech company, which has been rated very, very high by Inc., uh, you also are a practitioner. You have your own practice, which you own all out right now, which is a fantastic accomplishment. And myopia management is a huge part of your practice. So you were touching on, and I want to touch on this particularly with regards to myopia management, is uh, the valuing of ourselves, right? <laughs> when we are building, uh, building in fees and you know how we're selling things to our patients, it seems to be a disconnect as optometrists because maybe we're giving people that we don't value ourselves very well. Where do you think that kind of comes from? 
Yeah, this is an interesting question. I look at kind of the psychology of not only like selling to ODs, but really what comes up with our staff members and ourselves, right? And you at the end of the day have to value yourself in order for somebody else to value you. And if you don't tell somebody your value, someone is going to tell you what your value is. Mm -hmm. And in optometry school, we're not really taught how to charge, right? We're taught that we just run these services for free. And then when you go watch TV at night, you're told that eye exams are free. You hear it on ads and day in and day out. And that messes with your psyche a little bit, right? And so I think bringing this back to myopia control and knowing what you're doing for these young eyes and the chair time and the hand holding and all that you do is you're allowed to charge for that. And your patients deserve for you to charge in order to move your practice forward and invest in equipment that you see here and invest in technology to run your practice more smoothly. Mm -hmm. And that's how you benefit the patient is actually charging them. That's, that, that's difficult to kind of come to what that value really is and uh, how that comes about. And, and, and people are always looking for an equation or how to, how to go about that. Do you have an idea of how to set your fees for s different things? Is there a formula that you use? I have an idea that I will share, but yeah. I was curious if you were like, do it based on this or on, on your neighborhood or your area, or how do you do that? Yeah, it, uh, we living in South Florida, so a very saturated area, you have to be able to, again, you don't want to overcharge for things or undercharge for things. And so it's figuring out your tribe and your area and working together to benefit the practice and the patient. So we look at chair cost on what each exam costs us to do business. And you'll find out really quickly that a lot of these slots are not profitable, mm -hmm. especially if that patient's coming in and asking for a copy of their prescription. So it's understanding where in the day are your most valuable times and booking those appropriately. And then on the flip side, understanding your cost of goods and understanding all of your time, staff time, lights, everything that you need to run the practice to come up with what you need yeah. to be charging. So my, my approach is very similar. I, I recommend doing an encounter per patient, a revenue per encounter of how you are doing your business. And that way you can set like at least a minimum. So let's say for instance, that at the end of the end of the day or end of the month or end of the a week, your revenue is X, divide by the total number of patients that you saw for contact lens checks, for everything that you did, whether it was revenue producing, poor revenue, or high revenue, take it all. And that is the revenue that is generated each time somebody walks in the door. If you're going to see, and you're, you're gonna charge a global fee for your myopia management, and you're gonna see the patient, and you can estimate that four to six times over the course of the year, your cost for myopia management needs to be at least four to six times that number at the minimum. And that's only assuming that the value of myopia management is exactly the same as the value of a pair of contact lenses or a pair of glasses, which I think we would probably argue brings higher value because not very many people are doing it in your neighborhood. It's gonna affect the health and the quality of life for this child for a lifetime. So there likely needs to be a premium placed on that, and that can be plus X amount of whatever it is. But I find that a lot of people just say, well, it's a contact lens fit. And right. so it just they just charge this contact lens fit, and then they have a service or a, a product charge on top of that. And then if they and then they don't set themselves up to see the patient multiple times throughout the year to make sure that myopia is being slowed down, or they end up losing money on the myopic patients. Correct. And it's all about, at the end of the day, about the program, right? Mm -hmm. And so how you're talking to it about the patient, whether they're in an atropine program, the MySight program, or an ortho -K program, whatever it is that you're deciding to put them in, it's conveying that to the patient. So you're just upfront with them mm -hmm. on what goes into it, whether it's whatever treatment you're deciding. Yeah. Is best. In, in your practice, do you do uh, a, a global that is the same for all the different programs? Or do you charge separately for atropine, soft multifocals, ortho-K? 
How do you do that in your office? Yeah, so we keep Ortho-K and dual focus lenses at the same price because I want to decide what's best for the patient based on what's best for the patient, not what is best on the price. Mm -hmm. And that actually cuts a lot out of the explanation when you keep them the same. Then you're deciding, again, what's best for the patient and the parents not deciding, oh, this is cheaper when you know that this was the other option that was better. Mm -hmm. Atropine, because it's reserved more for your younger kids or can be added as a dual treatment, we do charge a little bit less for atropine because they need to go source it. And so that is in the how we're charging as a yeah. global fee. So we charge the first year because we're seeing them more frequently, a little bit more, and then we have the maintenance program to continue on so the it's, service. So it's less in the second, third, fourth Correct. year, however it may be. You know, one of the things that uh, I bring up in a, in, in, in a comment here is we, d we do the same thing. We, we actually charge the same for all services, ortho uh, soft multifocals, or, uh, ortho or atropine. But uh, we have some differences in our business models, right? So orthokeratology tends to be a couple of uh, a, a couple hundred dollars less in our cost of goods mm -hmm. than soft multifocals uh, maybe. Um, and then atropine, the patient has to go out and source that themselves or we're sending a prescription and then they go and get that. Um, how do you remedy that in, in your practice with the difference? Because uh, you're not making as much, presumably. Yeah, and that's, it's just, because there for us in the atropine part, there is no cost of goods, yep, right? Yep. So that's pure just chair yep. time. And we've gotten that really down on those younger patients. I kind of think of it as this kind of gateway drug as they're going to eventually convert into a different treatment. Uh, and we want to treat these young eyes, right? Those are the ones that you need to get them on mm -hmm. board really, really quickly. So I don't want this to be a deterrent if I've got a five or six year old minus two, right. 24 year old, you know, 24 millimeter myope. I don't want to delay that treatment and I don't want price to be an issue, right? So, but again, we're, I know where I'm going to make that up on the back end because most of these people have siblings. Most of these, you know, have older siblings. So you're getting into more of the family. Uh, economics there and then mm -hmm. getting in more patients yeah. that way so yeah. it all feeds each other one thing I've heard some people say and I've thought into that process is you know if I'm charging the same for both modalities both contact lens modalities ortho K may involve an extra one or two visits mm -hmm. and so the cost of putting somebody into that with the cost of goods plus the services may more closely equal out to the higher cost of goods. Correct. And, and, and that, that, that kind of brings that around. I want to get back to the value that we're bringing into this. Um, what, uh, what, what do you see is a, is, is a good stimulus for people who, you know, haven't, haven't really valued themselves appropriately to change their mind, right? I, I read a lot of books. Um, one I was just reading, it's called 10X is Easier Than 2X. Mm. And 2X, he, the way they describe it, it's very transactional, right? 10X is transformational. Mm -hmm. And so myopia, if you put this in perspective, myopia for your practice is transformational yeah. versus just this saying one or two all day. And so it's getting back to your focus, back to your vision, whether it's dry eye, myopia management, scleral lenses, aesthetics, whatever it is that you want to get into, it's allowing you to get back into that passion. And then once you understand that and make your own blocks go away, so they call them money blocks, mm -hmm. right? So that could have been passed down from how your parents looked at money and how they valued themselves. It could be just how other colleagues value themselves, right? And then just understanding what success looks like to you and staying true to that. Success for you looks different than success looks for me, right? And we need to honor that in each other and then just start to see the types of patients that you want to see. Yeah. And that's where your value comes from. You also uh, mentioned 24 millimeters. So may I presume that you do some biometry in your practice? I do. I've been doing it for quite some time okay. there, sir. All right. So that machine do you charge the patient each time they come in and, and and get that machine is it like do you charge them for that 
machine use? So that's part of the treatment. Ah. If they're in a program. Okay. If they're if they're just doing a regular eye exam, think of it like a pachymetry. Mm -hmm. So you're going to charge them yeah. for a pachymetry. What about for your ortho K patients? Do you charge individually for topography or is that part of the treatment? That's part well? of the treatment as well. So I, I was digging into that because almost everybody I know doesn't charge one-offs for those yeah. things. It's included in that. And that is, again, the value, right? right. Those instruments are not free. No. They cost quite a bit of money. And so really getting to, you know, is this just a normal contact lens fit that I could do with K's from my autorefractor no, there's no. a lot more that goes into this. And so the value that you're placing on it from a business perspective has to be higher as well because you're paying for these machines. And if you're somebody who's starting myopia management and you're thinking, well, I don't have that machine, so I can't charge it. Well, you're going to have to pay for it someday anyway. Yep. And it's really difficult to say to a patient, you know, we're charging you a thousand dollars and now we're going to charge you two thousand dollars because i got this new machine right so making a huge jump like that so charge appropriately for the service that'll help you be able to buy machines and, and equipment as time goes on and innovate and then you're not having to make these huge price jumps sounds well. like you and i have made that mistake <laughs> and that people our listeners should understand that maybe maybe <laughs> yes did you make that mistake i did i Tell did i was like that. let me just you know, get my feet wet here, right? On a couple of patients. And those are like <laughs> the patients that have been the hardest to get mm -hmm. on board with any price increases and whatnot. So it's always better to start high and get those few yeses and then go from there and make sure you're comfortable. Okay, so let's talk about that difficult situation. Now these doctors who are out there, they're listening and they're like, you know what, I do need to increase my prices. I do need to appropriately charge because patients aren't seeing the value because I'm not valuing myself because you know this isn't where it needs to be. How is the best way to go about a price jump? As I see it, there's two ways. Yeah. And I'd love for you to speak to both of them. One of them, pulling off the Band-Aid and just going to the price that you think you need to be at. Or over the course of the next three years, doing 125% more than where you're at right now so that you're increasing, 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 and then you've increased a little bit beyond that target number that you would have jumped to anyway because of inflation over the next three years. Right pluses and minuses of those and what uh, what have you done the first option for sure i think you need to uh again you're going to lose some patients along the way and that's okay mm -hmm. they always come back right mm -hmm. they're like bad boyfriends here david <laughs> um sounds like we've had this experience <laughs> <laughs> don't again inflation like the average car price right has gone up by ten thousand dollars in the last three years and so with inflation rising, you, ha you have to keep up with that. With our cost of goods going up, with equipment prices going up, with staff costs going up, everybody gets it and understands it. And it's just conveying that. A lot of patients, yeah, they'll give you some pushback. But if you're clear and honest and direct, that's all that you would ask of your own practitioner. Yeah. So this came to mind, not in the world of myopia, but it certainly fits in there, is a practice that I uh, have been speaking with recently. They uh, got purchased by private equity, and the private equity raised all the prices, mm -hmm. and they're losing tons of patients. And they're not losing patients because the private equity company is charging way too much. They're, charging, they're, they're losing patients because they weren't charging appropriately years ago and now private equity in this particular stance just brought it up to the the, the, the neighborhood everybody in the neighborhood is charging this much so the, you, sounds you know, like a lot was left on the table there yeah i think so i think that there there was a lot left on the table and uh you know going that direction if you make the jump to where you should be like you said you will lose patience let's say if it's a soft sphere or soft torque fit you're going to lose patients and they're going to go elsewhere. But they're, they're going to be gonna, charged maybe appropriately. They'll realize be charged you appropriately. were undercharging. Yep. They'll be charged appropriately somewhere else. And yep. they'll realize, oh, this is what I should be being charged. And if you're the reason they're coming to your practice because of your undercharging, 
then they're not valuing you. No, right? not at all. It, it all kind of comes back to circle. So I do think that the best way to go is to go to the appropriate uh, amount right off the bat. You may make more patients angry, but you're only doing it once. Yeah. Whereas if you have to increase a, a lot every year, for three years to get where you should be. Well, and you're going to get exhausted in that too. You will. You will. So and you'll end up not doing it. Exactly. And you'll end up going to either the full on price or you'll be undervalued. Right. And I think in the myopia space, that's really where we need to be. And it's not, it, people aren't doing myopia management because of cost, doctors or patients. The reality is when family members see the value of what myopia management does they find a way to make it work right and everybody will find a way yeah. to make it work the other beauty behind charging the appropriate amount is that there will be a patient now and then that can't afford it correct and when that is the case because you're a charging appropriately for everybody else you can develop a scholarship program for those people and work their way in and we've mm -hmm. been able to do that but if i was charging just over my you know just making a small profit i wouldn't be able to do that because i'd be losing all of that so when you're charging appropriately you can then say this patient legitimately has a reason they can't get this treatment and we will take care of them nevertheless and you end up getting everybody treated and i think what's interesting is just again all the money we have sitting in our practices we've already paid rent we've already paid our staff and we've paid our salary so any of these little increases that we're talking about, whether you missed a copay that was $10 mm -hmm. and you missed four of those a week, or you didn't charge the appropriate copay to a patient, or somebody came in and owed a balance, right? All of that goes directly to your salary. Yeah. And you, again, are okay, it's okay to make money and make good money being a business owner and being a practitioner. And as more and more private equity is coming in and enticing things away from the business, right? I was reading something and it's like, there's physician burnout because we need to get physicians back to the exam room, right? If that's what you love to do, then you need to make sure your office manager is on point and that you're handing things off so that doesn't fall on your plate. So I think, again, it's that work smarter versus harder mentality because I come across so many of us that are like, I can't see another patient. I don't want to see another patient mm -hmm. because we're burned out on all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. But that patient care too, if you're not seeing the patients that you want to see, you're going to be just as burnt out. Yeah. And especially if you're not charging appropriately. Yeah. If you're overloaded with the number of patients, it's probably because you're undervalued. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yourself yeah. included. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great conversation. Um, any closing thoughts? I want to just give people authorization <laughs> to charge. And I think we need to hold each other accountable too. Like you, it's hard sometimes at the top to hold yourself accountable and just find a buddy that's willing to do that with you and just bounce ideas off of each other. Keep learning, keep growing and invest in your people invest in your technology invest in your patients because mm -hmm. i'm always saying patients are coming in and oh doctor you've got this new thing too like every year you've got something new and my reply to them is i invest in you because you invest in me mm -hmm. and it's that's a simple thank you yeah. and it connects the care all together and patients want this they want to go to top of the line practices yeah. and you can provide that yeah. service when you're appropriately valued you can then appropriately value your staff yep and give them you know when it comes time for raises you're not like oh you know we've made it we, we're making a good amount we can then support this we can buy technology it just it just really fits but when you're undervaluing it's difficult to make those decisions yeah and just look yeah. where little things are hiding so like yeah. your ar past due balances Little things like that, you'd be surprised mm -hmm. where there's like That's 40 so grand here, 60 grand there, another 80 grand here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking from experience, it's just, again, everything just gets away from you. But if you get your practice and your staff and your team members understanding what all of that does and make it fun, then the sky's the limit. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us for the Myopia Podcast. Thank you. And thank you for listening into the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes. Again, we're uh, recording live from the Vision by Design 2023 meeting. Make sure to check out the AAOMC's website for information about the Vision by Design 2024 meeting in Dallas, October 2nd through the 5th. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode. I want to again thanks team for their support of this particular podcast. Uh, they have been a great supporter of the myopia community, helping to uh, make clinicians and offices run better, whether it's calling and scheduling appointments, whether it's answering the phone, helping with billing issues, scribing in the exam room, whatnot. Having a virtual team member in your practice is a real show stopper. So with that, I want to thank team again for their support. Check them out at hireteam.com. That's H-I-R-E-T-E-M.com or click the notes in the show description below. Thanks again to team. One, two, three, four. Thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes. 